I want you to open your Bibles with me to the book of Psalms. Let's do the one, 132nd Psalm. I want to talk to you today about let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise. It's something that the Holy Spirit has spoken to my heart and I see in the spiritual realm, that's why I want to share it with you, is that yes, God has risen through the Lord Jesus Christ and we have attained all things into life and godliness, etc. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. But there are ebbs and flows and there are times when God just flat arises and he's doing something. And there is something that is happening in the earth, happening in America, happening in our lives that has been triggered with the inauguration last week. God has risen. Now I'll do my best to explain that in a way that I hope it absolutely jazzes you. And you get so excited and turned on to what Jesus is doing in you and in the earth that you just go out and blow up demons everywhere. Lead people to the Lord, manifest the kingdom, all those good things. But nonetheless, I want to start in the uh, book of Psalms. We'll read a few passages, and then I'll explain it all. Psalm 132, and look at verse 8. Arise, O Lord, to your resting place, you in the ark of your strength. Now, I want to share with you that uh, the Bible, particularly Psalms, has a number of scriptures that talk about God rising. Now, we understand in the Old Testament economy and system is that it wasn't exactly the same way that it is now because we have been given everything uh, to us by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And we are brought into the kingdom and everything, every power, every revelation, everything that's necessary for us and for every generation and time and outpouring of the Holy Spirit, a revival, etc., is already in the earth because of what Jesus has done for us. Uh, but we still have to learn how to flow with the Holy Spirit and to appropriate all those things and to manifest them in each given time, each given day, in order to bring forth the purposes of God, to establish his covenant on the face of the earth, etc. So that's mightily important for us. It, it, it's important for me, I'm always careful, to accentuate those facts because from a theological base it's easy for people to get off and if they hear the phrase well let God arise and his enemies be scattered there's a concept that can come within them by their own thinking that it means that God hasn't risen unless all of a sudden he arises and does something you know it's like all of a sudden now he's heard our prayers all of a sudden now he's getting ready and he wants to do something because maybe there's enough of us collectively that have prayed in the right way and it's kind of like s and h green stamp book we got enough of these stamps and you know put together and filled the whole book up and got it all ripe and ready so that we present that to the lord well now he's got to do something about it let me tell you something that is not new testament mindset and thinking that is not revelation that is not theologically correct the Lord has already filled your stamp book <laughs> uh, you don't have to do it anymore it's not by works it's not by any of these things it, it those things that we do are responses to the leadership of the Spirit of God it's kind of like this wise football coach you know the, the football coach doesn't just teach his team one play and they go out there on the field and on the first time that they execute the um, that particular play they make a touchdown and that's great and everybody cheers but then the next time they get the football they execute the same plan by the third time the opposing team knows exactly what they're going to do every time and then is able to thwart their plans and they end up losing the game well the holy spirit is not stupid he knows god knows all things he's the wise football coach you know what he does he teaches his team a multiplicity of plays, defenses, different things that they can do. And then from the sideline, he just keeps calling in variations and changes because he's watching what's happening, what the opposing team is doing and so forth. They're going to win the game no matter what. It's just that they, the Holy Spirit has to call in 
the different plays along the way until the end of the game. And that's what the Holy Spirit is doing on the face of the earth right now. I guarantee you that the enemy has been at work. There have been uh, many things, and you know that, uh, that have come in the face of the earth and in the United States uh, that have been wicked, wickedness. I'm telling you, the secularization, slow down and enunciate, Pastor Mike, the secularization of America is an antichrist spirit and has been building and working for a long time. And what happened with the inauguration last week, January 20th, is a culmination of steps that the Holy Spirit has been leading the body of Christ into to initiate something new. And I guarantee you, it's just the beginning. Just the beginning. I mean, God is flowing. A lot of people focus on uh, President Trump. And he is a vessel, but you've heard me say it before, is that God's answer to America is not President Trump. His answer to America is revival and spiritual awakening. But President Trump is a vehicle and a tool with the hand of the Lord on him to facilitate or help facilitate that and bring it to pass. So he is important, but so are you. So are all of the ministries in America, the prayer warriors, the members of the body of Christ that are standing up and declaring the providence of God upon our nation. And I tell you, it's like a steamroller. It's just moving in the spirit. I've seen it. I've seen it. In the spiritual realm, I heard the crack a couple of weeks ago. Some weeks back, I don't remember the exact date right now. In the spiritual realm, I heard it break when God broke the opposing forces of the spiritual realm. I saw in the spiritual realm a shock wave flow through the second heaven. And it just went like that all the way through the second heaven. I saw, now I haven't said this publicly to anybody, I saw demons shriek in the second heaven, in a vision that God gave me. And I saw them. Do you remember that Jesus, when he confronted uh, those that, uh, the legion that had infested the Gadarean demoniac, and they said, have you come to torment us before our time? You know, tormenting the devil is one of Jesus' favorite things. Tormenting demonic spirits is something that I probably enjoy too much. <laughs> the way that you torment the enemy is you use your authority and you set people free. Glory to God. And that's what's happening. The torment and the shrieks that I saw in the heavenlies because of this move, because of this play, however you want to term it, this is something phenomenal, and it is steamrolling, it is continuing, it is picking up steam, if you will, and it is growing and growing and growing, and all of it is manifesting God's kingdom and purposes upon the earth and bringing revival. So the key to everything I'm talking about today, or at least the theme, is revival. Revival is here. It has been released, it is touched down, it is flowing, and you watch. You watch. You can hold me accountable over the next four, eight years, and let's see what happens. Did revival happen? Oh, it will. It is. Yes. There is going to be a spiritual awakening because there's permission do you understand what I mean by that? In the spirit, by this move, this release of God, there is permission from God for people to be saved. For pe Christians to stand up without fear and, have, and give the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. That yes, I am numbered among those who believe in the Lord Jesus. There is a permission 
It's a revelation in the Spirit for people to pray. There's permission for people to receive the blessings of God in their lives. Things that we were even praying about earlier in the service. Prosperity. Prosperity is in America again. Prosperity is in the body of Christ. Healing is in America. Healing is in the body of Christ. You see, the spiritual and the natural coexist. They're congruent. They're conjoined. They work together. And what's happening in the natural is a result of what's been happening in the spiritual, which cycles into spiritual, natural, spiritual, natural. And it's picking up steam. And so I'm excited about it. I know you are too. But look at me. I'm beside myself with enthusiasm. (laughs) And the Lord told me I could cut my hair. (laughs) Because it's here. (laughs) Oh, glory to God. So, in Psalm 132, verse 8, again I'll read it and then make my point. Arise, O Lord, to your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. So in Scripture, when it talks about God arising, particularly in the Old Testament uh, Scriptures, Psalm, there are basically two aspects of God arising. Number one, which this Scripture indicates, is that God arises to his resting place. In other words, he enthrones himself. He seats himself among his people. He becomes their God, and they become his people. He establishes his throne and his rule in their midst. Their worship of him becomes an umbilical cord, a connection with the Most High God. Now, from that arising to that place, there's a second aspect of it. I want you to turn to Psalm 68. Do you realize that all things are becoming new? Everything that can be shaken is being shaken. All things are becoming new. Wow. Psalm 68, verse 1. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let those also who hate him flee before him as smoke is driven away. So drive them away as wax melts before the fire. So let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Are you glad this morning? Let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. Let's just rejoice. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Yes, we worship you. We thank you. We rejoice in your victory, God. Yes, we rejoice in your victory over the Antichrist spirit. We rejoice in your victory as you arise and prove yourself strong. Hallelujah. Verse 4, sing to God, sing praises to his name, extol him who rides on the clouds. So what you see is a second part of God rising is that he vanquishes the enemy. He comes against the enemy's strongholds and the enemy's strategies. He pulls them down. He defeats the enemies, his own personal enemies and the enemies of his children. He protects his people. So God is rising in America. Now follow me on this because I am going to go to the New Testament in a few minutes, to kind of cement it in proper doctrinal form. But God in this day has decided as the owner of the football team to instruct the Holy Spirit, who is the wise coach, to do something on the field to put us back in position for winning the game. He has risen to that place 
Turn with me to the seventh chapter of Psalm. Psalm 7. Beginning with verse 6. Arise, O Lord, in your anger. Lift yourself up because of the rage of my enemies. And awake for me to the judgment that you have commanded. God has risen in anger. There is a righteous anger that God has. It's in truth. It's in justice. It brings forth his righteousness. God's anger has been felt in America. Now, when I say that, a lot of people are going to go, oh, yeah, because he's angry with America. No, no. His anger was against the enemies of America, even those who were in America and held political office in America. His enemy his, that his anger is against is secularism. Atheism, New Ageism, the political spirit of Jezebel, and even the political spirit of Pharisee. Let's keep reading. So the congregation of the people shall surround you. For their sakes, therefore, return on high. Now, it's not that God has to, that he left heaven and he has to go back to heaven or he has to get back to a position where uh, he has rulership again. He's always had it. But in this New Testament economy, what we're looking at is that God is manifesting that in a new way. He is proving himself strong. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity within me. Aren't you glad that God judges you according to your integrity, not by your faults? See, religion doesn't recognize that. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But establish the just, for the righteous God tests the hearts and the minds. My defense is of God, who saves the upright in heart. God is a just God, and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he does not turn back, he will sharpen his sword. He bends his bow and makes it ready. He also prepares for himself instruments of death. He makes his arrows into fiery shafts. Isn't that a picture? God defends his people. Behold, the wicked travails with iniquity, conceives trouble, and brings forth falsehood. He made a pit and dug it out and has fallen into the ditch which he made. You know, uh, sometimes some of my peers, I don't know that I've ever really said this, so I'll just quote it from them. Some of my good friends humorously will say that sometimes he's called Jehovah Sneaky. They humorously say he's called Jehovah Sneaky. Now that's not sacrilegious. It's just pointing to the fact that God's wisdom is above our wisdom and the wisdom of the enemy. A lot of people sometimes think, well, you know, they're trying to figure out how is it that God overcomes the enemy so the enemy doesn't know what's happening. And so they come up with doctrines that would be, well, the enemy can't read our mind. Or the enemy doesn't understand when we speak in tongues. Or those kinds of things. Now I look at some people's faces in here and I'm going, well, what? Isn't that true? <laughs> I don't want to get into that very far, but here is my opinion. The devil doesn't understand revelation. If the princes of this world had understood what was happening through the Lord Jesus Christ, they would not have crucified him. They understood he was the Son of God. 
the devil knew what he had come for. All the demonic spirits understood basically what was happening. What is it they did not understand? They didn't understand the wisdom of revelation. And so the enemy sets himself up time and time again. I love these scriptures because so many times uh, CK and I have been in situations where the enemy has set up ambushments against us. And you too, you know what I'm talking about. Things that have come in your life. And when you follow the Lord, when you walk in love, and you give yourself to him, then he has the ability to make those that the enemy is using to fall in their own traps. That's the wisdom of the Lord. When they dig a pit for you, they shall fall in it. When they roll a rock intended to come upon you, it shall roll back upon them, the scripture declares. And so that's what's happened in the United States. One of the reasons that those who have been the proponents of secularizing the United States and bringing it into a one world secular government that they are so upset, hurt, <laughs> amazed, baffled, can't figure it out, is because they built their own trap. They built it for the church. They built it for the righteous. They built it for those that would uphold God's purposes and destiny for America, and they fell in it themselves. That's the wisdom of God. <laughs> Praise God. What verse was I on? Oh, there, verse 14. Behold, the wicked travails with iniquity, conceives trouble, and brings forth falsehood. He made a pit and dug it out and has fallen into the ditch which he made. <laughs> his trouble shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down on his own crown. And notice this, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. So God arises, and when God arises, the whole world understands it. You understand where I'm coming from? Turn with me to the first chapter of Ephesians. Ephesians 1. Let's begin reading with verse 15. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, of course this is Paul writing to the Ephesian church, and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The Greek text actually says the word spirit there connotes power. The spiritual, unseen, extremely powerful tools of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places? Now listen. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, 
which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The fullness of him. The body of Christ is the fullness of Christ himself. And even in uh, John's gospel, the first chapter, it says that truth and grace are the fullness of Jesus. The body of Christ is filled with truth and with grace. We are the fullness of him. The fullness of him who has been seated far above. God has risen through the Lord Jesus Christ once and for all. It has been established that Jesus was raised up to the highest of the heavens and that he obtained all power and all authority. Remember he said, all authority has been given unto me both in heaven and in earth. He has all of the authority. He's waiting for everything to play out on planet earth till that appropriate time. When his heavenly father turns to him and says, go get your bride, son. Hallelujah. But until then, there is such a thing that's called third heaven authority that the body of Christ operates in. And when we operate in that spiritual authority, then we are operating in the authority that is from above. Jesus said that if, you, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Everything that we do in the body of Christ is to operate in that position of being far above in him. What that means is that the wise football coach, the Holy Spirit, according to the direction of Jesus, sends the plays into the earth, into the, to the body of Christ. That has happened right here in America, and there has been a major shift in the spirit and in the natural realm. Why? To bring God's covenant, to bring God's kingdom, to bring God's truth into our nation. God cares about you. He cares about your family. He cares about your ministry, your life. He cares about our nation. He cares about all the nations of the earth because this is a global manifestation. But we live in America right now. So it's something that is connected with our lives here. It is picking up steam. It is flowing. I guarantee you that you are going to have opportunities that you haven't seen for a long time. Opportunities in every realm of your life and existence. Because it has been released into the earth. It has been released it's been called in by the Holy Spirit. And the body of Christ is rising. And I see in the spiritual realm victory. I see revival. We have to understand, again, that this victory is because the body of Christ has received the instructions and the plays of the Holy Spirit and has stood its ground against the spirit of Antichrist. That doesn't mean the Antichrist spirit is gone or defeated. You cannot kill a spirit. Spiritual entities are eternal. Spiritual influences are eternal. But they shift, they go underground, they, uh, they move, they come back later. Remember that the Lord Jesus, when he came out of the power uh, of the Holy Spirit from the wilderness... It says that the devil left him for a season. Couldn't defeat him with the temptations, so left him for a season. He never did defeat Jesus. Jesus always outsmarted him. No matter what the Holy Spirit used as a flanking attack, or Jesus always knew what it was, even when he was crucified. He said, no man takes my life from me, but I lay it down of my own free will. He outsmarted the enemy. The enemy didn't outsmart him. Because by laying down his life, he purchased a redemption. Now that power and authority of Jesus being lifted up on high, far above, he has risen, and because he has risen to that place of authority, 
then the ebbs and the flows and the timings of God with the seasons upon the earth allow him to manifest that in a way that we can say that God arise and his enemies be scattered. Not because we're trying to talk him into something, but because we know that that's already his will and his position. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. When God moves in, it changes everything. When light comes into a dark room, it illuminates it. Dark never overcomes light. Light always overcomes dark. When God moves into a country, revival happens. When God moves into a government, changes occur. When God moves into people's lives, salvation and victory and all those things occur. And so God is arising. We war from victory, not trying to get to victory. We already have the assurance that the greater one indwells us, that Jesus has already provided the victory. Now, that's a very important prayer position for everybody listening to me right now. Because in your prayer life, are you trying to talk God into doing something that he has already done? Or are you bringing into manifestation the reality of what he has done by your prayers? Big difference. That's the difference between warring from victory or trying to war to victory. Hebrews 10. Sin consciousness, righteousness consciousness. Sin consciousness is trying to get God to be bigger than the devil. Now please, do not misunderstand me. I am not minimizing any single person or group of people or even a nation that is calling out to God for him, his kingdom to be made manifest in their lives. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the attitude. I'm talking about the doctrinal position from whence they come and they attempt to do that. Are they trying to beg God to do it? Then they're doing it from the earth. If they are doing it from what Jesus has already purchased for them, then they're doing it from third heaven. Sin consciousness is from the earth up. Righteousness consciousness is from third heaven down. It's all about revelation. The spiritual powers of revelation and truth. God is on the move. Watch and see what happens. See, God has risen in your life. I want to bring it home. God has risen in your life. Meaning, it's time for a manifestation or manifestations in reality in your life of what Jesus has purchased for you. We fight the good fight of faith to release the kingdom. Not to try to get the devil to get away from us so we can receive the kingdom. He is releasing something in your life. And it happened. I'm so excited I can hardly stand it. Because I see something. I see it. People, I see it. And when you leave this room, I know that everybody in here, you're spiritual folk, and I know that you've already felt it. But when you leave this building today and you go home, does it look any different? I certainly hope that it does. But what matters to me is that it feels different. That you think different. That you receive something more in a different manner. It's about what Jesus is doing now on planet Earth. Get ready, because your life 
is going to change significantly. Every single one of us. Don't let the enemy distract you. Don't let circumstances, opposing circumstances, cause you to doubt. You've got to stay with it. What Jesus is doing now is going to manifest in tremendous things. Number one, revival in America. You know that the Lord has had me. I know, I know it's the whole body of Christ, but still, everybody has their own assignment. And in my own specific assignment and relationship with him, he's had me praying from second heaven, third heaven, I should say, uh, for revival for years. And I can absolutely attest to the fact that it was released, the breakthrough. Now the enemy is going to try to come in, do whatever he can to dissuade believers and so on, make it look like it's not happening. But you know what? You just keep going. Just power through because the manifestations are there. Don't look at the circumstances in your life and try to interpret scripture or judge God's will for your life according to them. They will deceive you every single time. Unless, of course, it's something good. I mean, you know, if somebody gives you a million dollars today, we're, uh, which I pray happens to everybody in this room and everybody watching the video, uh, <laughs> then, yeah, yeah, that would be great. Lord, give me $500 million today and, and then I'll just share it. CK and I'll have fun writing checks and giving them to everybody else. Praise the Lord. Uh, so those are good things. When you receive healing in your body, that's a good thing. That's a good manifestation, a good circumstance, so to speak. But you know what I'm talking about, the opposing ones. They don't speak for God. The Word does. Are we children of the book? Mm -hmm. We're not children of the circumstance. And as we stand on the word, it will never falter, it will never fail. So here's the deal today. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. The enemies of God, whether it be a manifestation of the Antichrist spirit through people, through political structures, through circumstances, through lack of finances, through physical attacks, through relational distresses, um, through doors being closed perhaps, or opposition to our ministries, different struggles that we may have. In this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world, the Lord said. Those things are changing. Praise God. They're changing. They're changing. Did you hear me? They're changing. Stand on your feet with me right now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. The Lord told me to release something today. So I want you to get ready right now. I'm going to release this spiritually, and we'll do it collectively. I'll pray for anybody later. We'll probably have ministry. But this is for you, for all those that are watching the video to cross the nation of America right now. The Lord told me a couple of weeks ago when I went in to get a haircut, I was going in to get a haircut, and he said, don't cut your hair. So I waited a week, 
I started to go back in and get my hair cut, and he said, don't cut your hair. I said, why? He said, I don't want you to cut your hair as a personal consecration to me until Inauguration Day. And he said, when Donald Trump is inaugurated, then I want you to proclaim and declare and release as a prophet of God revival into our nation. And then you can cut your hair. And so I did that. Are you ready? Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, according to to the leadership of the Spirit and what you have called me to be and called me to do. I stand before these people and I openly, boldly declare revival, change, blessings. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. I speak it upon the nation of America, the United States, revival throughout the land now, in Jesus' name. Say it this way, I release revival into America, in Jesus' name. Are you ready? ready. Here we go. I release revival into America, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I command everything to change. Aligning itself with God and His purposes. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your people. Every single one now. I want you to get ready to receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ, the way this will manifest in their lives with newness with truth, with manifestations of God's kingdom, the likes of which they have never experienced before in their lives. Right now, release in Jesus' blessed name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' blessed name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Ooh, can you feel that? Wow. That's powerful in the spirit. Powerful. Powerful. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Now, just receive this as I pray. Lord, in line with that, I release the anointing for supernatural finances into your people's lives. I release the anointing for supernatural youth into your people's lives. I release victory into your people's lives. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise you, Lord. I'm just waiting on the Lord for a second. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and be seated, please? We are going to receive our offering right now. Before we do, let me just take a couple of minutes to share with you how important it is to connect with your harvest. See, everybody wants God to move in their finances, as well as every other area of their life. And what I'm going to tell you right now also applies to every other area also. But with finances is, you know, people will call me and say, pa Pastor, would you pray for my finances? I get requests from all over the nation through the website by email asking pray for my finances people in the congregation sometimes say pray for my finances and that's good but there's this 
kind of this mindset that there's no real responsibility as far as faith or receiving or doing anything about it. It's like, well, we just pray for God, and then we just keep bombarding the gates of heaven, and somehow maybe he'll dump something on us. What I want to share with you right now is that's not a scriptural viewpoint. What? (laughs) Now listen to me. God has initiated the laws of sowing and reaping, the economic dynamics of the kingdom. He has given it. And so for us to ignore that, any believer, and you say, well, all I've got to do is pray and expect that God's going to do it. is not operating the economic system that God has built within the body of Christ. How do you operate that? Number one, you align yourself up with the word and line yourself up with faith. And you sow. See, a lot of people are waiting for their ship to come in and they never sent one out. A lot of people are waiting for their harvest to come And they never sowed. They never planted. And so the economy of heaven says, I plant and I reap. I plant and I reap. And within that context, you do two things. Now, I'm going to say three. Number one is you operate in faith. It's not just trying to beg and convince God to do it. It's appropriating what's already in your heavenly bank account. Remember what Paul told the Philippians? He said that. He said, this isn't for my account, although he needed the finances and wanted them and enjoyed them for his ministry. It was so that God would add it to your account concerning giving and receiving. So, you sow in faith knowing that you're working the laws of the Spirit. And th- that's number two. Sow in faith. Number three is reap in faith. Farmer doesn't just plant and then just wait for the harvest to appear in his barn. He has to receive by faith. He has to do whatever he can to position himself. He goes out, of course, and works the harvest and brings it in. But does that make sense to you? I just wanted to to encourage you and let you know that the cherries are falling off the tree, but not just because you're laying there lollygagging around, it's because you're shaking the branches and you've got the bucket and you're by faith, you know know what I mean? Okay, praise God. So, What I would like you to do right now is to prepare your tithes and your offerings. If you need to give by bank card, use the envelope. If you want a receipt for cash giving, use the envelope. Make sure that you write on there. Write in tongues, not in tongues, rather. (laughs) Write in English, not in tongues. Purpose in your heart, what to give. Sow in faith, believing for the harvest, reap in faith, knowing that you sent your ship out and it will return. Hallelujah. Okay. And those that are watching by video, you can go right to our website if you're not already there. Word of Life World Outreach. Go to the giving or donation page and you can get right in on this. Remember I said earlier in the service that the key to all things is revelation? Mm-hmm. So what you're doing is you're sowing into the anointing and the revelation. I cannot overstress that. That portion of ministry that we have. You become a partner. By your gift, you become a partner with the assignment on this ministry. And you reap the reward for everything that this ministry every accompli- ever accomplishes.